let's add some more non-block locks to Minecraft. All right, we find ourselves back in IntelliJ once more. And in this tutorial, we're going to be finishing out our non-block block saga. That's usually what I like to refer to, the blocks that we've been adding. And then this time, we're going to be adding the button, the pressure plate, the door, and the trap door. Those are once again going to be a lot of copying over of JSON files. So highly recommend going to the description, to the GitHub repository or the individual gists and copying over the block state JSON file, the block model JSON file and the item model JSON files as well. Or alternatively, you can go to the external libraries all the way to NetMicroft Client Extra 118.1 or whatever your version might be. And then in the block states folder, you will have basically all of the block state JSON files from vanilla also available that you can just select, copy over, and then paste into your own folder structure as well. But for the time being, let's go into the mod blocks class and let's see what we can see. So first of all, let's just copy over the citrine wall and we're going to copy this four times. This is going to be the citrine button. We're going to make this the citrine button as well, of course. And this is a stone button block because there's no metal button block. It's going to be a stone button block. And very important that we also call the no collision on this one. And then we have the pressure underscore plate right here. And this is, of course, also going to be, be the pressure underscore plate. This is going to be a pressure plate block. And the pressure plate block actually takes in a sensitivity. We're going to choose sensitivity everything in this case. And then we're going to be fine with this as well. And then the door and the trap door are actually not going to be citrine. They're going to be ebony door. Ebony underscore door, actually. And then here as well, ebony underscore door. And then making this a door block, very important. And the door block also takes in the no occlusion call right here. That's actually very important that we add this. And then the other one is going to be the ebony underscore trap door. And then same here, of course, with the name ebony underscore trap door. And this is, could you guess it, a trap door block with once again actually taking the no collusion here as well. Right, and this is actually all that we need for the, well, the registration. Now, there is one more thing that we need in terms of code, and that is in our tutorial mod class. What we're going to do is we're going to add a new method here called the client setup. And this is going to take in a final FML client setup event called event. And then in here, we're actually sending the render layer for the door and the trap door. Now, this is very important. And please take note of this. Don't just mindlessly copy this over. Please pay attention here. We're setting the item block render types for a specific block. So for example, here, we're setting it for the mod blocks that ebony door dot get and then we're setting the render layer in our case not to cut out but to translucent now this is not strictly always the thing because or this is not strictly always necessary usually you want to set this to cut out however the ebony door that i have the texture actually has certain pixels that are not fully alpha values so they're let's say they're at like 50 percent opacity then you need the translucent for this to get through. If you have certain pixels that are completely cut out where no color is shown at all, then you need the cutout. It's very important that you choose this correctly. So usually you have certain pixels that are completely cut out for the normal door, for example. So we can take a look at the normal door in the assets folder right here, just as an example. So right here, the bottom door, you can see these are pixels that have no value. They are basically alpha value 100%. So they are completely see-through. When you, for example, look at the glass, this is has alpha value, let's say 60% or 70%. Then you need the translucent. Very important, very important that you keep this in mind and choose the translucent here. Now, that's not all of it because the client setup at this moment would not be called. What we have to do is we have to then call this. So we're going to say event boss dot add listener, this colon colon client setup. And then everything should be fine right here. So just making sure that you call this below the setup event and that should then work totally fine. In the long tail of the JSON files, let's add the translation first. And this is going to be right here, Citrine button pressure plate ebony door and the ebony trap door and 
well, then it is off for the block states JSON files, which are going to be absolutely delightful once more. So now it is time for your guesses to which one of those block states JSON files is going to be the most complex. Well, I guess you haven't thought about the button yet, because as you can see, the button once again quite complicated because it has three block state properties. Now we have talked about this in detail last tutorial. I highly recommend going back and looking at that because there I basically explain very much in more detail what is going on here. The general gist is that some of these blocks have particular block state properties and depending on their values we're pointing to a different block model. That's the general idea. Let's also take a look at the pressure plate. Actually quite boring all things considered. The door that's, well, that's one more of those that are a little bit more, I mean, crazier, definitely. The door is also interesting because it is two blocks in one, so to speak. Then the trap door is actually also not that interesting, even though it has a lot of stuff in here. It's actually not that interesting, all things considered. So once again, those are all available in the description below, GitHub repository and individual gists as well, or in the external libraries as well, as, of course. And for a more detailed explanation, highly recommend taking a look at the last tutorial. So the block model json files there's going to be the button ones of course the two pressure plate ones we're going to need some for the ebony door and the ebony trap door so those are going to be how many in a total 12 of them there you go so usually like i've previously mentioned in the last tutorial the block model json files really fairly boring all things considered the only thing that really changes is going to be the actual parent here now the ebony door and the ebony trap door, those are a little more interesting because they have different textures, but for the button and the pressure plate, it's going to be the citrine block that it points to for the texture and the parent here, you know, it's, it's just going to be always different. So that's all that there is to it. Now for the trap door and the door, let's take a look at this. You can see there's a bottom and a top door and you have to define the textures in both of them. And then for the ebony trap door, well, it points to the ebony trap door texture in this case. So it's also not the most interesting overall, to be honest. So let's then add the model JSON file, the item model JSON files, of course. That's going to be for the button, the pressure plate, the ebony door, and the ebony trap door. There you go. And there you go. They are also not too spectacular, just pointing to some block models. The trap door as well. The door is the only one that points to a item texture here in this case. So let's just add the textures as well. We have the ebony door, ebony door top, ebony door bottom, and the ebony trap door. Now say that 10 times very fast is actually not that easy. And then we also have an ebony trap or an ebony door texture as well. So this is the texture that you have in your inventory as well. Um, I can tell you the, te the textures for the ebony doors are going to look spectacular. I really like them. So those are all of the steps that we have to take. Very important is the client setup right here. So this one is one of the most important ones. And the fact that the translucent issue is usually not the renderer layer that you would choose. You usually would choose the cutout. But once again, I can show you the example here, the top or the even this one, the trap door, you can see this is sort of like glass inside of the door. This is why we need to choose the translucent. Usually, if this was not the glass, but it was completely cut out, then you would want to choose the cutout. Very important. Please keep this in mind. Right, but this is all that we need to add the door, the button, the pressure plate, and the trap door to the game. So, let's see if it works. All right, we found ourselves in Minecraft. As you can see, the door, the trap door, the button, and the pressure plates have been added. Now, it's very interesting. I can't right-click on the door or the trap door. I will show you how to fix that very easily in just a moment. You can see if I put a redstone signal on it, then it works and I can go through them and they look absolutely freaking amazing, I must say. So once again, this was great job done by Nano Attack. Link is in the description below for his Fiverr page. I can just highly recommend getting some cool textures from him as well. Now, the reason that the doors did not open on right click is because we used material metal. We have to, of course, use a material dot wood right here. And now the ebony door and the ebony trap door will be openable by just right clicking it. So that's all of that requires, basically. And the rest is, of course, already taken care of. Right. And this concludes this tutorial right here. I hope you found this useful and you learned something new. If you did, I would very much appreciate a like. And don't forget to subscribe for more tutorials just like this one. So yeah.